more than just bone and skin. Listen, listen to the song of the wind. Practice, practice, practice often implies a personhood. A person has to be practicing. Does the self have to practice anything at all? And yet, let's not move too quickly because of the strong tendency to identify as person, hmm? then a kind of corruption a kind of corruption happened in consciousness. As if that is possible. Yes, somehow in the dream. Where the consciousness hmm, identifies and becomes just a person, personality only. And because of this delusion, practice is necessary for the deluded consciousness. Now, some people may say, but it's impossible for consciousness to be deluded. And it is true up to a point. It is true and untrue. It is untrue because only when the consciousness, the presence is identified or polluted because of identifying as only the body and conditioning, upbringing and so on, can delusion come. Without this, there is no delusion. If there is no delusion, no practice is necessary. And some people have got a very sharp intellect, and so they can catch this at a mental level, but still it hasn't really been transmuted into living experience. Others something persists. The drama of identity seems to go from stage one to stage two, episode one to episode two, episode three, like that. Mm. So satsang is for that, because gradually the, the tendency to identify uh, weakens and finally collapses. But yet it seems so rare. There seems such a powerful pull, a loyalty to identity. And even with those who have been practicing spirituality for some time, it seems the stain of identity is the last to go. Still we hold on to me. This is me, and I know, but I said to you before, and oh, why are you talking to me? And I said, My God, it's disgusting. In a way, because so many have come and have entered again their full heart into emptiness and feel the fullness of emptiness. What a paradox. The full joy you know, beyond the facade of personhood. And still the waves of duality pull you back in pull you out into the waters again and wash you back up on the shore like that. Mm? While we have the sense of identity and it will just go on for a while. Don't be afraid. You see. But where there is inside a uh, true earnestness for the truth. And there are some beings who despite so much going on, as it were, their 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 drive for freedom is so strong that they will be liberated. And it's not a question of maybe in another year or two years. I don't look at it like that. Because when I see each one, each one, I see only the self. But when I hear you, I hear the non-self. I hear the person. I hear the feeling, oh yes, but you know, how can I do this? And oh okay, okay, okay. And then we have to work like that. Even here, in such a place where there is intense and single-minded explorations in the truth, powerful distractions are play. But the one who is earnest will transcend their influence very quickly. So I say, don't come for anything less than full awakening. 
if you only come for a, a little truth, it's going to be very, very difficult. <laughs> but if you come for all the truth, it is very easy. Some disagree, of course. Sometimes you look inside, nothing is there at all, like an ocean of silence. Very quickly, you call the mind, come, 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 See? and fill up again with all this noise. For a sage, noise or not noise don't make any difference to them. It means nothing at all. Their being is totally unshakable. It doesn't depend on anything phenomenal. So nothing in the phenomenal world can move them. That was just child's talk. Only when you conceive of yourself as merely a person. Can the wa- can somehow the waves, let's put it, the waves of the mind can trouble you. And it is good that they trouble you. If they don't trouble you, you might just believe that you are you are a person. Unchallenged. But it's very costly to be a person. Cost you all your energy. You will worry. You'll pursue. Restless, inhibited. Mm. When we transcend the limited identity of a person, you wonder why. Why didn't I not see this before? It is so so beautiful. It is so beautiful. I remember once being in Switzerland, in a certain part of Switzerland. I think it was Appenzell, a place called Appenzell. I was there with a friend, and then when somehow we got rained in and uh, s- strong snow. For a whole week, we could not leave the house. It was full up to the windows were snow. I had never seen anything like this. And then after that, the rains came, and the clouds close the sky. We were in this miserable place. And then one day, uh, the rain was so heavy, then the, the snow itself cleared. And she said, let's go for a walk. I said, walk? Yeah, let's go for a walk. And then we walked, and we started going up the mountain. And after maybe one hour of walking, we came right out of the clouds, out of the clouds, and came above. I could look at the clouds. I never saw. I said, I only see this in aeroplane. I never see it on foot. The clouds were beneath us, and above the clouds, beautiful sunshine, beautiful rabbits drop bouncing about on the top of the hill. And oh my God, what has happened? We have been here, and uh, living underneath this big dark cloud, <laughs> raining, feeling miserable, and can't go anywhere. And yet, above the clouds, this beautiful life is going on. The birds. All, all flying around. <laughs> so what is, how can it be like this? It's a beautiful metaphor. Living in the in the ego. Hmm? Living under the sky of the ego. It's something like this. But you think it's your world. That's all we know is like this. And then you climb into the heights of your own being. And you say, oh my gosh. I'm the same but different. You're more than just bone and skin Listen Listen to the song of the wind The graciousness, the spaciousness 
coming from within A concrete brick of stone The song they sing is Heaven is my home Heaven 